Hey YouTube, in this video I'm going to be talking about the PCIe 5.0 uh, power connector and how that translates or how what the details are on the ATX 3.0 specification for this. So if you have a high wattage GPU or if you're interested in kind of understanding why these cables were kind of in the tech news on and off because of the so-called burning connectors or burnt connectors or fire hazards, that sort of thing. Stay tuned, we're going to be talking about this in depth. Those that have RTX 4090s, a new NVIDIA RTX 40 series GPU, especially if it's a Founders Edition, they all feature this connector here. So they come with these adapters and they also come with these warning labels in the boxes. So, for example, just to kind of give you guys an example, the 4090 Founders Edition ships with a warning that says, use only the included PCI Gen 5 compliant power connector adapter for the 40 series Founders Edition card. Use of non-compliant power cables, third-party adapters may cause technical issues because that can help you avoid any sort of weird problems. So similarly, the 30 series cards, the previous generation also featured these warning labels because those cards oftentimes, at least the Founders Edition from NVIDIA, shipped with these 12 pin adapters. Now these are not the full specification, like the 12 plus 4 spec there, but these, so you can see this is the adapter that ships with a 3080 or a 3080 tie. This one that I have here is actually for a 3080 tie. You can see it right there. So this one, the warning label for a 3080 Ti reads like this. Use only the included NVIDIA power connector adapter for your RTX 30 series Founders Edition. Use of third-party connector adapters may cause technical issues and void your warranty. So again, it's the same type warning. Even though this didn't have the full 16 pin, it didn't have the sense wires, most people who use this didn't have any problems. As far as I know, there were no reported incidents of this older connector catching fire or melting or burning or whatever. Um, and my theory there is that the reason why we never saw any of those issues was because most of the AIB partners, when they manufactured the 3080 and the 3080 tie, as well as the 3090 and even the 3090 tie, a lot of them opted to not use this. And instead they used, you know, the traditional multi eight pin connector. So you have cars that had like two or three eight pins on them and that's usually what they would do. So they kind of were like the AMD 7000 series cars where they would just run like triple eight pin and call it a day. That's kind of how they dodged the bullet so to speak on that issue but that is something to be aware of. One thing that is a little bit different is the 3090 Ti because a lot of people don't know or they don't remember that the 3090 Ti, so this here is probably, it's the heaviest Founders Edition card, it's heavier than the 4090. So the 3090 Ti was in fact the first graphics card to introduce the PCI 5 connector to the consumer market. One thing that is a little different about the 3090 Ti is it is the most unique Founders Edition card, uh, not only because it has the 12 plus 4, and it also has the NV Link bridge because you can't do NV Link on the 4090, you can only do it on the 30 series. So not only does it have the, these two things together, but it shipped with a cable that was a 3.8 pin. Despite the fact that the card is rated for 450 watts, it doesn't have the sense wires. The adapter has nothing up there as you can see. It, it has a bridged top pins in the middle there, which is the opposite of the 3080 Ti. The 3080 Ti's adapter bridges the two lower ones, and the 3090 Ti bridges the two top ones. So they are incompatible. You cannot use a two 8-pin adapter on a 3090 Ti. Likewise, because the 3090 Ti has a triple 8-pin, you cannot use this with a 3080 Ti. They're not backwards compatible. So that's kind of annoying, and because there's a lot of weird inconsistencies like that and differences, that's probably why the AIB partner cards oftentimes opted to use dual 8-pin or triple 8-pin directly on the GPU and skipping this adapter fiasco. So with the introduction of the RTX 4090, this GPU was the first one to include the four sense pins, the infamous sense pins 
that allow the graphics card to pull up to 600 watts. So you can see there's four of these. So each one of these is 150 watts. So you can see 150, 300, 450, 600. That's how you get 600 watts. So a 600 watt rated connector has to be equal to four eight pin connectors from the ATX 2.0 spec. So with that being said, now let's get into some of the, the interesting things that you should be aware of regarding this cable. So we'll use this as an example because it ships with the connector on both ends on the cable. So you can see they're identical ends. One goes into the power supply, the other will go into the graphics card. So this works with a 3090 Ti. This Doing this makes the 3090 Ti fully compliant with the ATX 3.0 specification. So what that means is that if you have a Founders Edition 3090 Ti and you are still using this adapter, I highly recommend that you upgrade your power supply, make that a priority at some point, and get that off of this adapter because this adapter is not actually compliant. And the 3090 Ti is a 450 watt GPU. And because it lacks the sense wires on the adapter, it doesn't have the ability to limit how much it's pulling from these. From my own testing with GPU-Z, and I've had this card for about a year now, most of the time that I had it last year, it was using this adapter. But I did swap over to the power supply that has the cable as soon as I could, and I don't know, maybe that's why I never had any problems. Um, but yeah, I don't recommend using this with a 3090 Ti. With that being said, 4090 should be a lot better off because the 4090, if you have an older power supply, as long as you're using four eight pins, it's totally fine because it knows how to sense if it's ground or open. If you have a lower wattage power supply, say for example, an 850 watt that doesn't have four eight pins, or maybe a 700 watt or something like that, and it only has three eight pins, then you can run this 4090 adapter with just three eight pins. What will end up happening is it just won't pull more than 300 watts. Total wattage of the power supply will determine how much power this cable can pull, or the GPU can pull via this cable. So up to 600, it's up to 600. If the power supply is not rated for something above 1100 watts, it will not pull the full 600. What that means is if you buy a 850 watt power supply, an 850 watt power supply will limit it to about 300 to 450 watts. It depends on how the sense pins are configured on the power supply side. So if, if it's 850 watts, the recommendation from NVIDIA is that the sense zero and the sense one pin should be ground for sense zero and open for sense one. And if the, if the 4090 detects that the sense zero is grounded and the sense one is open, meaning there's nothing there, it will not pull more than 300 watts. In conclusion, if you want to have the full 600 watt delivery available, this is probably important news mostly to overclockers and tweakers because the average person who buys one of these is probably okay with running it, you know, at a specification where it can't pull more than 450 watts because that's what the power that's what the graphics card is rated for anyway. It's a 450 watt TDP card, not a 600 watt TDP card. However, for overclockers, extreme overclockers, the XOC crowd, this will be news for them. You're going to want a power supply that is equal to or greater than 1100 watts because at that total rated wattage the sense zero and the sense one pins will both be connected to ground inside the unit which tells the 4090 that it can go all out it can pull up to 600 the rated specification of the cable that will become the max power limit so that's something to be aware of the conclusion, the TLDR for this entire video is try to use a native plug if you're on a 3090 Ti or a 40 series graphics card. Don't use the included adapters or try to avoid using the included adapters. However, these are, these in particular, the 40 series ones are smart adapters. So 
they have the sense wires in them. So that is an okay alternative. And the other thing, the final piece is the total wattage output of the power supply determines how much power delivery the graphics card will pull from the cable. So hope you guys found this video useful. If you have any questions or comments, uh, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to reply when I can. And as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.